Hi, I'm Grace. This is SU in twenty twenty three. Hey Grace, um, what is your number one tip for twenty twenty three? Well, this is a very exciting question. So my number one SEO tip for 2023 is to prioritize user experience in the SEO strategy, and this is because two main reasons. The first reason is that Google has been focusing on searcher experience, which is reflected in its core algorithm update, its new features and products. For example, the page speed, core web vitals. Product reviews and the most recent、uh, helpful content update. So these are all about、uh, delivering the best、uh, paid experience or user experience to searchers, and I believe this trend will continue in 2023. The second reason is that、uh, given the current、uh, economic climate, that business have shifted to profitable growth rather than growth and. At any cost, so turning traffic into conversions and higher customer lifetime value have become more important than ever. And it's not not just in SEO; it's in any other marketing channels. And user experience is a key component to achieve profitable growth. Right. Okay. Well, a, a lot of common sense there. So let's explore. Into what you were saying a little bit more as well. So you were saying prioritize user experience in SEO strategy.、Um, so、yeah. what does that look like practically when you're putting your SEO strategy together and you want、mm-hmm. to prioritize user experience?、Mm-hmm. How does that work? Brilliant. Okay. So conventionally, when we plan the SEO strategy, we probably do it、uh, by the different aspect of SEO. For example. Technical SEO on page and off page. However, yes, what I want to、uh, suggest or recommend here is some probably some tactics that I think all the SEO should consider to test. Yeah. So, for example, the first one I would like to、uh, recommend that、uh, is、uh, very simple, probably the the easiest one, but a very powerful one. Is to communicate with users and ask for feedback. So we let the users to tell us what they like and what they dislike on our site, so that we would understand pretty straightforward that what we should continue doing and what we should stop doing and get it improved. And do you have any favorite way of communicating with users? I mean, can that be virtually? Can that be digitally? Does it have to be in person? Yes. Yes. Right. So this kind of communication it can be done in user research. So such as user interviews and surveys, I've done both of them. They really, really helpful. Yeah. And、uh, there's another way to communicate with user indirectly. So we know that there are a lot of、uh, tons of insight that can be discovered by talking to the customer facing team. So, such as the sales and customer service team. So, all these are based on my experience. Yeah, I mean, obviously, you should be talking to the customer service team and sales teams, and you get recommendations to do that. But I love the fact that you've taken it upon yourself to also. Conduct direct user experience and direct user interviews yourself, and I think often nothing replaces that direct communication、um, with a customer yourself, rather than hearing it through someone else who might not be articulating the the true pain or the true concerns that customers have. So, well done for doing that. Now, in terms of What conversations you have?、Um, how do you decide on what questions to ask them? What, what kind of format do those conversations have? Yes, so maybe I can share a recent、uh, user interview experience with you, David. Yeah. Sure. So、uh, recently, we've been optimized or localized a English、uh, e-commerce site for different country in a different language, and we luckily we've received、uh, some traffic and conversions from the targeted country. So、uh, this brought us interested to start to communicate directly with the the real customers. 
So before that, uh, we before between me and uh, my user experience designer, so we we had a discussion about uh, the goal of this interview, what we really want to get out of uh, this direct communication, and to make sure that we ask the right question and to make sure whatever we we get uh, from the customers, we can implement it with our tech bandwidth. Yeah, rather than, you know, um, we have the answer, but there's uh, probably, there's no resource we can ever implement it. So we we have the, the goal and the spo- scope ready. And then we, we yeah, so we just ha- introduce these questions in a natural conversation flow with the users. And what did the goal look like? Um, what kind of goal did you have? Yes, for example, one of uh, my goals is to understand the not translation, the localization of the content on the e-commerce side. So I, I asked uh, the, all the customers that what they think about the product description yeah, on the localized website. And then I was given probably one of the most important feedback to help me to shape our strategy and to feed it back to the clients, uh, what they should prioritize uh, on top of the list. So one user said, it looks like the content in the on the product description page are translated by a machine. I can understand all the words but it wouldn't help me in the conversion process. So I have to rely on a third party e-commerce platform who's selling exactly the same product. I have to rely on their product description to get to know more about uh, this product, these functions. So it's only the price uh, that attracted them to convert on the brand e-commerce side, which is a bit unfortunate. So we feedback this to the to the client. So what would you do then if a marketing director came to you and said, look, this is good, important stuff, but it's not the role of the SEO team to focus on what essentially is conversion rates, conversion rate optimization. That's the conversion rate team. Um, SEO's team should be focused on building links or optimizing the technical health of a website um, or doing things like that? What, what would you say in response to that? Well, I think if the SEO director said this thing a few years ago, probably that's uh, valid. But uh, since the world of SEO and the whole digital marketing industry is evolving, so conversion has been put um, as a goal objective to each marketing channel, really. So imagine that uh, why Google want to send traffic to a website that uh, uh, the users, they can get the information, but uh, not a really good user experience. So there's no conversions and the users, they are disappointed about this experience. So eventually we see a strong trend already existed that Google wants all the site to provide a perfect high first class user experience. And if a website provide an excellent user experience, so eventually they, they will get conversions. So why they wouldn't get conversions if they working really hard on the user experience? So you've mentioned conversions quite a lot there. Is conversions the best way to measure a positive impact on user experience or are there other metrics that you also look at? Yes, yes. This is an excellent question. So I think in terms of measure the success of user experience uh, associated with SEO, uh, there are two ways we can measure. So quantitative and qualitative. And in terms of quantitative measurement, we can use the data in our analytics tool, such as organic conversion rate, bounce rate, uh, session time, returning users. And in terms of the qualitative uh, measurement, that can be done through user survey 
customer reviews, uh, feedbacks, and even the direct conversations that uh, say after three to six months, you revisit the, the, the users you interview before and ask of their feedback again and see the difference. And I believe these are super important. Uh, probably that is uh, much more important for now than to getting a lot of traffic, but uh, no eff- uh, effective conversions. Okay, superb stuff. So user experience, obviously an essential part of SEO now and in the future. How do you see it evolving? Are there any other aspects of user experience that you think um, Google will be focusing more closely on in the future? Other aspects of user experience. Yeah. So we know that Google has rolled out uh, the helpful content update recently. So in terms of the content, Google said this is an ongoing effort to reduce low quality content and make it easier to find content that feels authentic and useful in search. So Google wants us to focus on people first content rather than content for the search engines. The other aspect I would like to address, this is not new, but super important is we've got to make the site loading fast. But how fast? So ideally, we want our website to load within three seconds or two seconds if it's an e-commerce site. And it is reported that 40% of consumers will wait no more than three seconds before they abandon a site. So it's very, very expensive to have a slow site because they cost a retailer uh, $2.6 billion in lost sales each year. Mm. So yeah, monitor and test the page speed regularly would uh, help all the SEO to discover and fix loading issues such as uh, unnecessary scripts, images uh, that too large uh, to, to load and the redirects that slow down uh, the loading speed. What do you think Google means by authentic content? Authent- yeah, so what we can see that quite many SEO uh, followers do is that to copy competitors' content and try to optimize it and uh, outrank the keywords from competitors. So I think uh, these content, they they are not authentic because the drive behind it is primarily for impressions and uh, keywords rankings. So whether, what I mean is that the content should primarily addressing users' needs and their pain points solve a problem they have uh, instead of, you know, working on on rankings and traffic, and I believe that uh, with Google's AI technology, it just to become more and more smarter, isn't it? It it is it is, but um, I guess there are different sides to AI. There are there's Google using AI to try to determine what to rank, um, and then there's potentially content creators using AI to generate content. Exactly. Yes. I think it's, it'll be very interesting uh, in the next 12 months. <laughs> we see how these two AI compete with each other. Uh, <laughs> exactly. Yeah. yeah. The yeah. machines commence battle. <laughs> <laughs> well, very you have shared what SEO should be doing in 2023. So now let's talk about what SEO shouldn't be doing. So what's something that's seductive in terms of time, but ultimately counterproductive? Something that SEOs shouldn't be doing in 2023? Yeah. Okay. So linked to what I've just uh, shared that I think all the SEO should stop creating content that primarily uh, driven by impressions and keywords rankings instead of addressing people's needs and pain points. So yeah, I I think uh, a really good tip by creating content helpful content is to ask questions and really put ourselves in the shoe of the users what exactly they look from the content we create. Grace Wei Hao is a growth product manager at Samarkand Global and you can find her by searching Grace Wei Hao on LinkedIn. Grace, thanks so much for being part of SEO in 2023. Thank you very much, David, for having me today. Get your copy of SEO in 2023, the book, 
over at seo in2023.com. 